despite the media coverage over the past 12 months, the benefits for women in this legislation hasn't gotten that much attention. And that's kind of unfortunate because when you look at the full range of women's health needs and how they're addressed by the Affordable Care Act, this is by far the best women's health bill since Medicare. Whether you're young or old, whether you just graduated from college or get insurance through your job or on Medicare, this law gives women much more control over their own health care. It's going to help young women. Under the current system, uh, a young woman in her 20s often pays 50% more than men for exactly the same health insurance coverage. Uh, they pay more but often don't get more. In fact, the coverage that young women get is often insufficient. 80% of the plans currently in the individual market don't cover maternity care. Many don't cover contraceptives, which is the single most used drug of women of any age group in this country. Given how many women use this care, it, it's like health plans that would say, well, we just won't cover treatments for the flu or the common cold. Uh, so one of the things that the Affordable Care Act does is bring some fairness into the health insurance market so women have better health choices. It makes it illegal, once and for all, to charge women extra for health insurance. That practice is coming to an end. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know that being a woman is no longer a pre-existing condition. <laughs> Secondly, uh, a new consumer-friendly health insurance market is created where all plans will be required to cover essential health benefits like newborn care and maternity care. Uh, Copays are limited for key preventive services like pap smears and mammograms. And thanks to this law, women are no longer going to have to put off things like breast cancer screenings, taking the risk that their cancer won't be caught in time. And let me just give you a snapshot of what that looks like. Early detection of breast cancer, the survival rate now, thanks to years of advances, is up to 98%. Late detection of breast cancer, 23%. So a delay in getting a screening is often a fatal delay. Uh, if you're a young woman looking to buy health insurance, you'll have much better choices. But the Affordable Care Act also helps mothers, families in the marketplace. We know that women are much more likely to be uninsured and underinsured in today's workplace. We have jobs that often don't come with health insurance. For all the progress that's been made in the workplace, less than half of the women working today have the option of getting health insurance through their employer. So that means that we often end up having to buy a plan on our own. And if any of you have been in that market recently, you know it isn't a very consumer-friendly experience. Uh, it's a market where, frankly, insurance companies have had most of the power. Uh, if your child had asthma, he or she could be denied coverage. If you had a breast cancer diagnosis, you could be locked out of the marketplace. Sometimes we even saw coverage denied if a woman reported an incident of domestic violence that was considered a pre-existing condition, which made her ineligible for health insurance. Even if you were lucky enough to get insurance, that didn't mean that problems were over. Uh, insurance companies could put an annual or lifetime limit on benefits and making sure that people have the health security when they get sick was not always a part of the program. Uh, some of you may have thought that insurance was really about giving health security, but for too many women that often was not the case. And the worst part, even if you had insurance, uh, paid to get the full benefits you needed, sent in your bill every month, there were still practices in some companies uh, that were called rescissions, that policies were canceled looking back into an experience and trying to find a reason to drop patients from the marketplace. With the Affordable Care Act, we're putting women back in control of their health decisions. 
Now, earlier this week, the President announced a new Patients' Bill of Rights that some of you have worked on for years, and it finally is the law of the land, to make sure you get some security and stability when you actually buy insurance coverage. Starting this fall, it will no longer be legal to deny coverage to kids because they are born with a pre-existing condition or develop one during their life. That, those days will be over. And by 2014, that same protection will be provided to all Americans. Um, next, we're going to make sure that coverage is there when you need it by ending rescissions. And many insurance companies have stood up and said they, they are going to end that practice right away, well before the September mandatory deadline. Annual limits and lifetime limits will be phased out and cease to exist, making sure that if people are engaged in treatments, life-saving treatments that they need, that treatment doesn't have to stop during the course of a year or that they'll hit an annual cap. We protect the choice of doctors. So women will no longer have to see a primary care provider before getting an appointment for an OBGYN or have a choice of pediatricians or primary care providers in their network. We make sure that if someone is in an emergency situation and accesses a hospital outside of the network, you then don't get billed for extraordinary out-of-network costs. We want people to take prudent steps to uh, get health care that they need. So these new rules in the patient protection area are really about basic fairness. It basically, it says if you hold up your part of the deal, your insurance company will hold up their end also, and we'll make sure that people actually get what they pay for. They mean that beginning this fall, health insurance markets will be a lot more friendly for consumers, especially for women. But from the start, this law has been more than just improving health insurance. Access to care is critical. It's been a moral imperative, something that we've not dealt with for decades in this country, and those days are coming to an end. But as Deborah already said, uh, the law also has some very significant underlying features, making sure Americans get better care at a better price by promoting quality, cutting waste and fraud, and really focusing on advances in Medicare. And it's why the Affordable Care Act is also an important act for older women in this country. Uh, because we tend to live longer, we also rely more on Medicare. Women are the majority of Medicare beneficiaries, and we make up seven out of every 10 Medicare beneficiaries over the age of 85. That means no one has a bigger interest in strengthening Medicare and making sure it's around for future generations than we do. And that's exactly what the Affordable Care Act does. It gives law enforcement new resources and tools to crack down on health care fraud. It closes the donut hole, the gap in prescription coverage that 8 million Americans hit every year, so seniors will be able to afford their medication. And perhaps most importantly, we begin to seriously change the way we deliver care. Now, nearly half of the women on Medicare have three or more chronic conditions like diabetes and heart disease. And that means they're usually seeing multiple doctors in a month, taking handfuls of medications every day. And often, as you just heard from Regina's case, the doctors are not talking to each other and the records are not talking to each other. So part of what the Affordable Care Act does is create powerful incentives so more doctors start delivering the kind of coordinated, patient-centered care that has been shown to get the best results. The partnership is very focused on helping to deliver. Electronic health records are certainly an underpinning of this. Uh, you just heard Regina describe what is a terrible nightmare for anybody to endure. What happens when doctors and patients can't get their information, can't share information, and can't use that information? And unfortunately, her story is not uncommon. And that's why the President and this administration made an historic investment in health information technology as part of the Recovery Act. 
your support to bring consumer voices and make this very real for patients in this country is so important as we begin to implement this critical strategy, one of the building blocks for a new healthcare system. We want to make sure we're using the tools of electronic medical records to actually improve patient care. And to make these changes, we need consumer voices driving them, and we need all of you to make sure that your voices are heard.